Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Sam with the Home Outliers. Hope you're all having an awesome day, staying safe out there. Today's video is on six dividend stocks to buy in May 2020. These six stocks have some tremendous upside potential, in my opinion, based on how long the stay at home orders are and quarantine stay in place. But before we start, please smash that like button down below if you haven't already. It's always hard for the little guys, so any support you can show, I greatly appreciate it. And quick disclaimer. Please remember to do your own research when picking stocks. I am not a financial advisor, and this is meant to be for entertainment purposes only. And guys, let's go ahead and look at my quick portfolio update. I track all my stocks through Yahoo Finance. I have, them in, have stocks in different brokerages, different investment accounts. I'm glad to report that I'm back in the green. You can see uh, about $83,000 in stocks. Right now, I'm currently up at a gain of 4366 Currently looking to build back up my cash reserve and we'll be buying stocks again at some point. I feel like there is still a lot of uncertainty and the prices of some stocks rebound way faster than I would have thought. So I'm going to wait and watch. I do think that stocks will take a tumble again because of the nationwide quarantine and we still don't know how all the effects are of what those is going to look like. So the first stock that is a buy is Costco Wholesale Corporation. When it comes to the ultimate stay-at-home grocery store, buy in bulk, department store, this is it. It's very popular right now. Uh, the current price is currently at trading at 309 in the after hours. Um, it's got a solid dividend at 0.90%. What I like most about this stock, what I like most about the stock is not only it has a solid customer base, really strong loyalty, and the fact that they can constantly increase their membership dues if need be. But they really have a strong balance sheet too. You can see that there is a strong cash balance sheet. They've got $8.71 billion. They've got free cash, $3.02 billion. So they can sustain and weather any type of downturn. And the fact that people are going there to buy you know, toilet paper and all kinds of things to, to hoard up and stay at home, this makes them a really solid buy. Let's look at what some of these analysts are saying about Costco. With this report from CFRA dated back in April 25th, 2020, we can see that Costco is to recommend a four-star buy rating. Um, you can see here from their notes, we can look at, and just to highlight a few things from the CFRA report, have highlighted some things that you should really consider when you're looking to buy in the stock. Um, the first thing here is that it says, we also expect membership fee income growth to rise through the U.S. and Canadian membership fee increases. Another thing here is looking at Costs benefited from reduced competition in the wholesale market stemming from the early 2018 closure of 63 Sam's Club stores, about 10% of its total store count, resulting in less competition for Costco, which is really good for them overall. We can see here from the investment rationale risk side, you can see here from the investment rationale risk section that they see favorable sales growth comparisons and a slight easing of deflationary food pressures due to the COVID-19, coupled with the benefit from recent membership fee increases. Most importantly, there has been more of a store sales growth accelerated and higher cost per sales transactions per customer visits. If you're looking at the 12-month price target that they've given out, it's $360, which assumes that the shares will trade at 36.5 of the fiscal year 21 EPS. Um, so just Looking at it from a long-term perspective, I think this is a really good stock to hold. The fact that it has a really strong brand loyalty, loyalty to customers, um, I see this as a, just a really strong buy and hold. And stock number two is ABV, ticker symbol ABBV. This is a really popular dividend stock to hold, especially in the bio pharmaceutical products categories. Um, it's got a huge market cap, $125 billion, pays a solid dividend at 5.65. What's nice about AbV as a whole is that the fact that they specialize in um, specialty disease spaces, their products are mostly in the category for rare diseases or diseases in general that are usually not well treated on normal medications. So they're given, you know, biologics or products that are manipulating um, cells or the way that the body replicates. You can see here also that AbbVie has a really strong track record of meeting its earnings reports. This company has some really well-known name of products that are treating various diseases. Um, the first one you've probably seen commercials for is Humira. 
There's also Skyreasy, which is a newer product. And then you can see here some other names here. These are products that are typically when these patients go on these type of therapies, you can know that they're going on them pretty much for life because these diseases are typically not curable. So they're going to have to be on treatment for the rest of their life. So that's a steady stream of revenues for AbbVie and that they can continue to produce new products through their pipeline with either new indications to treat different diseases or finding new products of their pipeline. They also have a really strong balance sheet too, which you can see there's 39.92 billion cash on hand. The debt's at 67 billion, but a lot of that's through research and the production process. Um, you can see also this free cash flow of 8.65 billion. So from a financial standpoint, this company is really strong. And if we're looking at what some analysts are saying, this report was on 4-23-2020. You can see that it's set up as a very attractive buy rating. It has a very strong buy rating for AbbVie. It's in its ninth rank of out of 357 healthcare sector stocks. This screen is kind of busy here, but you can see that in different sectors, economic and reported earnings has a very attractive rating. The return on capital investments has a very attractive rating. Free cash flow is set at attractive. The price to EBV ratio is set at a very attractive, and the growth appreciation is set at a very attractive. So long-term hold, this is a really solid company to get in and buy on and hold for dividend earnings. And looking at Morningstar on April 6th report, you can see that it has a four-star buy rating. The title of the report says that coronavirus should not affect the big drug firm's moat and only minor. And if we look at their comments or what the bulls are saying, that AbbVie supports a strong dividend yield, which should act as a valuation support as the cash flows to support the dividend look secure over the next few years. AbbVie's increasing its entrenchment in blood cancers should bode well for growth as well for pricing. Power remains solid in the ther therapeutic area of the pharmaceutical market. AbbVie's next generation immunology drugs targeting the IL-23 and JAK pathways sh should help mitigate the competitive threats facing Humira. Bears say several AbbVie's pipeline drugs and immunology have mechanism of action similar to drugs already approved, taking away the first mover advantage for AbbVie. The higher profit margins on Himera will likely cause an amplified impact on earnings as sales are lost to eventual biosimilar competition. The extra debt needed to finance Allergan deal could put amplified pressure on AbbVie if core assets like the Botox and Humira face tougher competition than expected. All right, and the third dividend stock to buy in May 2020 is Domino's Pizza, DPZ in ticker symbol. It's got a really strong dividend yield at 0.85%. Uh, what makes this stock really good is you know, the fact that everyone's staying home. There's going to be more takeout. Pizza's super popular. Their app is really easy to use. I don't know if you ever used it before, but it's super easy to use. And they just got really good products and deals going on with that as well. We look at their earnings report. They're usually hitting that earnings report. Looking at this Vickers report showing insider trading, you can see there's an uptick of them buying shares, insiders. If you look here in the next slide that you can see here pretty recently on 421, there's been a large purchase of shares from inside the company. You see the directors are buying this. So this is really showing that they're really backing and believing that there's gonna be a really strong upward trend with the company, especially with how the stay home on orders in the quarantine. There's gonna be a lot more people buying pizza, as you know. And looking at a recent report from Morningstar, April 23rd, it's got a two-star rating. Um, what you're looking here at the bulls, showing that Domino's has considerable international growth potential and will continue to support store-based growth as the firm executes its on its fortressing store density strategy. Given the widespread adoption of online commerce and on-demand delivery solutions, we believe convenience will continue to be a priority for purchasing decisions, which we see as a tailwind to Domino's core carryout and delivery offerings. On the business strategy now look, the fact that they've got a really robust mobile platform and they have healthy balance sheets at both at the corporate and franchisee level, we're looking for restaurant industry investment opportunities. Pizza will always be a competitive space, but I believe that Domino's got a pretty loyal fan base they got great deals, the mobile app, and they just continue to have a lot of different solutions to offer their customers. 
All right, and the fourth dividend stock to buy in May 2020 is Yum Brands Incorporated. Yum is a solid brand. They've got a lot of different fast food chains. They own KFC, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut. So, you know, people staying home, there's going to be more takeouts. It's a great option. Also, they recently acquired the Habit brand burger chain, which is a really good burger chain if you haven't tried that already. It's one of my favorite burger chains to go to. It pays a dividend yield of 2.19%. And it's currently trading at a forward PE of 24.81. You can see here from the one-year chart, slightly down from the uh, 52-week high at 119. It's currently at 88, so there's a lot of opportunity there for um, appreciation. Looking at the Robo Analyst Research Report from New Constructs, Young Brand is at a 1 for a very attractive buy rating. It ranks 43rd out of 450 consumer cyclical sector stocks. It's got a very attractive rating. Looking at the rating report, looking at the rating report, you can see that in these five sectors, it's all at a very attractive rating or attractive rating for the free cash flow yield. So it's a style company owned for dividend growth as well as capital appreciation. With more people staying home, taking out food, um, they have really strong brands for takeout and drive through. And I see it's a solid company to own during the long term. And looking at the Morningstar report, Yum Brands is at a five star rating. You can see that Yum is taking its steps to minimize the coronavirus related disruptions. For franchisees, the shares are currently undervalued in their in their terms. Um, with you know the wide moat that Young Brands has of the different brands, there's a lot of different opportunities there. The bulls say that there is a shift to almost an exclusive franchise ownership structure, should offer more of a consistent long-term cash flow profile. The wage rate hikes, urbanization trends, and relatively young populations should be conducive to increase restaurant spending across many of Yum's brands. Despite uneven macro trends in some regions, global average unit of 1.1 million and cash on cash returns of about 20%. For most of Yum restaurants, still exceed most QSR chains. You know, similar to what's going on with Domino's Pizza Company, they're well positioned because of the strong moat that they built around their brands. They're also international. They just recently acquired the Habit Restaurants, which is another strong burger chain. Add that to the mobile background, the mobile platforms that they have, uh, the capabilities for food delivery through all the different service options out there, like a DoorDash. This is a really strong company to own, especially when people are staying in and taking food out to go as well. And the fifth stock is Digital Realty Trust Incorporated, ticker symbol DLR. It's currently at its 52-week high. At recently hit today 155.06, currently sitting at 154.23, pays a dividend yield at 2.99%, currently trading at a pretty high PE ratio of 65.63. So if you're not familiar with Digital Realty Trust, they're part of the industrial sector of REITs. So they have support data centers, the co-location, and interconnection strategies of across customers across the Americas, the EMEA and APAC, ranging from cloud information technology services, communications and social networking, to financial services, manufacturing, energy, healthcare, and consumer products. I really like this company because it's one of the biggest ones when it comes to data centers. You know, the cloud gets bigger and bigger with these more of these companies such as the Microsoft, the Amazons, they're gonna need places to store all that data. So that's where companies like DLR will come in place. Looking at a CFRA report on April 25th, the Digital Realty Trust Incorporated is currently at a three-star rating and a hold. Looking at some highlights, they expect sales to increase 4.2% in 2020. DLR has a big international footprint as well and will likely attract new customers looking to expand into the Asia Pacific or European markets. Looking at the investment rationale, they see that their opinion is a hold Reflects DLR, DLR's competitors have a stronger national exposure as well. But DLR has a strong portfolio of properties across a number of high demand areas, high occupancy, and robust customer retention. DNR now announced an agreement back in with Intersection to close in December 2020. 
They have operation data centers at 53 additional throughout Europe, which we see as a strong benefit for DLR in the future. It also recently completed the acquisition of Ascenti, a Brazilian data center operator for $1.8 billion. So Digital Realty Trust is considered a real estate investment trust. It's a REIT and is treated as such. They are, as of December 31st, 2019, DLR's portfolio consists of 225 data centers, including 41 properties held as investments in unconsolidated joint ventures, of which 147 are located throughout the U.S., 41 located in Europe, 19 are located in Latin America, Five are located in Australia, three are located in Canada, and ten are located in Asia. So DLR currently has 36.6 million rentable square feet, including 4.5 million square feet of space under active development and 1.8 million square feet of space held for future development. So retention and leasing will be their key priorities in making sure they can maintain their revenues. Digital Realty Trust Incorporated's Morningstar rating is at a three star. You can see here from the what the bulls are saying that digital reality shift towards connection and co-location exposes to its most attractive parts of the data center business. It can now offer enterprises of fast, secure, and efficient connections to their cloud service providers. Digital Realty's full suite offering and high exposure to cloud providers gives it an advantage over competitors that can only offer smaller retail co-location space. As the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and other innovations that increases the public's demand for data and connectivity require more hardware and connections. As the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and other innovations that increase the public's demands for data and connectivity require more hardware and connections in data centers, DLR should benefit. Some of the bears are saying that DLR is too dependent on the cloud service. Also, competitors such as Equinix is starting to gain some share. And the last but not least, dividend stock to own in May 2020 is Activision Blizzard Incorporated, ticker symbol ATVI. So if you're not familiar, Activision Blizzard is one of the biggest gaming companies there are. They have many huge franchise titles such as Call of Duty, World of Warcraft. You probably have played or heard of those games before. They have a dividend yield of 0.62%. They're currently trading at $67.06. This company also consistently hits their targets of their earnings reports. They have a really strong, solid foundation of customers who pay monthly subscriptions for some of their games, as well as leading some of the larger franchise titles out there. You can see here that their presence is, you know, worldwide. They've got people that can play games out in Europe, in the Middle East, Africa, Asia. Some of the titles that they have are World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, Diablo, Hearthstone, Overwatch, Candy Crush. So if you've ever been on Twitch, you've probably seen those games or you probably play those games yourself. With more people staying in, there'll definitely be more opportunities for people to look for things to entertain themselves. Gaming is one of them, obviously. So with that... There's going to be a lot more players online playing Blizzard games, especially since they have really good games in general. With World of Warcraft, they have to pay a membership due every month, so that's residual income coming in. And Call of Duty, which all their, you know, they have the mobile coming out pretty soon as well, so that's going to generate some new revenues for them as well. So if we take a peek here from CFRA's report on April 25th for Activision Blizzard, it's currently at a four-star buy rating. Described as the company is it's the world's largest independent developer of video games and related content. They forecast a three-year revenue growth of 11%, up 12% year over year in 2019 through 2020 of 9-12%. to As more people are staying in, they're looking for more affordable gaming options. Um, there's also games available on the Xbox and PS with the Blizzard Entertainment games which are Call of Duty, Diablo, Overwatch. In their investment rationale, it says, the buy rating combines several secular trends, the upcoming console upgrades, resulting sales catalysts, disposable income growth in emerging markets, 
the shift in from physical media to digital distribution, with the fact that video games are likely to be relatively protected from COVID-19's hit, to discretionary spending in H1H20, due to 2.3 billion people confined to their homes, we see a jump in new players, engagement, and overall interest in video game content, resulting in a longer-term ripple of higher sales through 2020. We can also see this just from also looking at reports from Twitch Gaming as well, that they're showing this is a huge more surge of people on there watching gaming as well in general. So that'll wrap up the video. Thanks again for checking out the video, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are. Are these any of the stocks that you were looking at? Or do you own any of these stocks? Are there any stocks I should be looking at as well? Let me know in the comments section below. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up if you haven't already. Greatly appreciate the support. Hope you guys have a great day out there. Stay safe. See you all soon. Thanks.